Yeah, people, big up on yourself. This is Big John New Towser. And you don't know, I'm a DJ, a radio personnel, selector, sound man. You understand? Radio station owner, bag of things. <laughs> Before I used to start playing music, I was an MC, I was a DJ. Oh, okay. Like I, I spit lyrics. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they used to call me Little John. If my parents knew where I was, <laughs> trust me, would have been a peer problem. Cause we, we now get in till like four, five o'clock the next day. I'm mm. have to wake up seven o'clock to go to school. <laughs> so we go to school now. I'm tired. I don't play music to, for people to go out and make trouble with their one another. I'm playing music to people to, to socialize. You know how much picnic we make born in, in our music? Call <laughs> <laughs> them go out and meet one another and start a relationship and then the, the baby born and then family created. You understand? I've been all over the world. I've been a lot of places playing music. Yeah. And it's, it's been an honor to like travel the world. Mm. To play music doing something that you love doing you know me i say so today another um upfront discussions and i'm gonna say right from now this is a special one for us because we've got a individual today that's an icon not only in the midlands and birmingham but worldwide way over 20 years in the music industry. I'm going to let him introduce himself, right? But I'm going to say from now, this episode is going to talk through a musical journey and we're going to give flowers to an individual that we at Upfront Discussions Podcast believe that this individual deserves his flowers right now. He's probably had his flowers from many people in the music industry but we are giving him his flowers today. So for anyone that doesn't know who our next guest is, I'm going to let you introduce yourself and tell the viewers what you do. Yeah, people, big up on yourself. This is Big John New Towser. And you don't know, I'm a DJ, a radio personnel, selector, sound man. You understand? Radio station owner. <laughs> Bag of things. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, Big John, you may not know because we've we've only recently met each other and the dialogue, right? But I'm gonna go back right to the nineties when I was a bus driver, right, and I was playing and um, driving buses mm -hmm. and I used to listen to the radio stations and your show used to be on and that used to get me through my shifts. That would get me through my shifts and You've been on many radio stations, many, many radio stations. But before we start with the musical journey, what was life like for a younger Big John before music came into your life? Well, to be honest, music has always been in my life from, okay. from since I was a toddler. Because where I used to live, opposite my house, was a man that owned a sound system. And my older brothers, my older siblings, was at that house every day. Like the song was called um, Lord Sufferer back in the 80s. So he had like, he had two, he had three kids, but two of them were my age group. So I'd be over there with them. You understand? And to see what they was doing, it used to fascinate me. And I'd be saying, yeah, man, this is what I want to do when I get older. You understand? They used to like practice every day. So, because we was over there with them, they'd, they'd give us all the, 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 the reject songs then and give us a gram and send us upstairs in the attic and say, this is a phone room, we're not going to do anything and play no music up there. So, so, we'd watch what they do downstairs and then go upstairs and imitate them and, and try to be like them, you get me? Mm. So, that's where it stems from still. The okay. man's name is Mr. Ewers, so we have to big him up. Mr. Ewers, big up yourself. Yeah. Don't know. And when was the... Okay, so now you're practicing and you, you're doing your thing. Yeah, I was like probably about seven, eight years old. Oh, that young? Yeah, 
That's what I'm telling you. It's always been in my life, bro. <laughs> yeah. <from> day one. <laughs> <laughs> so when was the first time, right, um, you really now took it out there and you played at your first venue? Boy. Well, from being in from being in that position, we was always around sound systems. And I'm not sure if you know Summerfield Park. Yes, yeah. They used to have a, a venue in there. We used to call it the shed. <laughs> it used to be on every Thursday night. So we'd be out there. We didn't have money to go in, so they used to just let us in because we couldn't afford to pay to go in, you understand? Mm. So from that, we kind of formed a, a youth man song called Bushman Warrior. Okay. You see me, there was probably about eight, nine of us. And um, we used to play at Summerfield Community Centre mm. on a Wednesday. So before I used to start playing music, I was an MC, I was a DJ. Oh, okay. Like I, I spit lyrics. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, they used to call me Licker John. I used to, <laughs> to want to be like, you know, you know the artist. Yeah, you know, the artist. Right? Yeah. The direct, yeah. yeah. So I used to idolize him. So that was my nickname, Licker John. <laughs> you see me? So it stems from there, from, from way back in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, because when I look at the time now, mm. right, I don't know. This is just my personal view with the sound system culture. Right. We don't get a lot of it now, you know, like the speaker boxes yeah, and the it's, vans it's so and all that. It's like it's gone to a thing where a man just walks with his music or his laptop or his CDs. Back in the day, it was none of that. If you didn't have a sound system, you couldn't do that. Yeah. You had to have a sound system. Mm. You, you know what I mean? It was it was that, that was the main objection, having your own thing, your own equipment. Yeah. You know? But since, well, I don't know, probably about 2000s, it's all changed. Yeah. A man just walks with his bag, <laughs> his laptop, his CDs, and he's a DJ. You know, for the young people then that may be viewing this, mm -hmm. just give me a little sense of what it was like, the sound system. Like, you know, when you, 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 you're preparing to go to a venue and you're loading up the van and... and <laughs> we have to meet at the garage or wherever the sound was stored. It'll be about, probably about, like I say, 10 people, probably more than that. Every man's got their position. You got a man who's wrapping up the wire. You got a man lifting up the boxes. You got a next man stringing up the sound. And then you got the rest of the, 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 the guys that play the sound. Yeah, you, you get what I'm saying. Mm. So that's what it was, and we'd all travel in the van back, in the back of the van, in the back of the van, because them times you couldn't afford to drive. <laughs> no one ever had cars back in them times. It was with, either with the equipment, the back of the van. pardon, with the equipment. Yeah, <laughs> you go in the back of the van, or you don't go. <laughs> Simple as. So that's what it was, man. We used to. It used to be like a different world being in the back of the van. <laughs> We used to have our tape cassettes, tape recorder, music are playing at the van. We, we have a card pack, people are playing card. The back of the van? The back of the van. Wow. Man's eating food, he's, he's got his snacks and that. It was it was a, a different world, man. It was it was a nice vibes. Yeah. It was a beautiful vibes to be like in the back of the van. Nobody never used to argue yeah. or complain to say, oh, I'm not going in the back of the van. It was a joy to go in the back of the van. <laughs> Yeah. Trust me. So, um, but what about the term box boy? Because box That's boy was a I term mean, like, as well. When I say everybody's got their position, you have man will wrap up the wire, you have man will lift up the box them, you have man will play the song, you understand, you have man will drive the van. So everybody had their position. The box boys was the man them what lift up the sound system. Oh. You, you understand? Yeah. And before you could like, before you could, even play music on the sound or MC, you'd have to be a box boy. So that was oh. like that. That was like um, you, you go through you you go through from the box boy and then you move up a notch. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Mm. So you lift up the box. When MC say you you can do something else, no, you get promoted. So you don't be a box boy again. You turn selector or you turn an MC, but to be honest, we used to all lift up the boxes. All of us used to do it. Yeah. We didn't just leave it on one set of one set of individuals. Mm. Everybody used to just chip in. 
Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? And would you drive out of town as well, like long distance in, Bro, in the back of the van like that? We used to go to some places, man. Like, mm. for example, we'd go Manchester, we'd go to Leeds. Drive there in the back of the in van. In the back of the van. Huddersfield, Liverpool, you name it, we'd go there, man. Everybody in the back of the van. And it was not no arguments. No one's not saying, oh, I'm in the back of the van, you know, because like I was saying, that was the only way you could get to the venue. Yeah. It's either you go in the back of the van or you don't go at all. And so, you know, with the group now, the crew, the sound, once they get to this venue, everyone that's playing their position, mm -hmm. once the sound string up, he's like just there now partying and nice and vibes in. And then when the sound string down, you string it back down and pack it back up. Same way. Same way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, some of the sound systems then that you played on, what are some of the sound systems that you actually played on? Well, like I said, we had a Ute Man sound, which was called Bushman Warrior. Yeah. We used to play at Summerfield Community Center every Wednesday. And a big Ute Man used to come there like friends from school and that, you know? But it was an early thing. It would start probably like, seven o'clock and finish at 10 11. yeah you know what i mean that was my first sound system mm. then i joined another sound called scientist i heard of that from northfield so like when bushman went playing out and scientists was playing out would go with them mm. you get what i mean yeah yeah so i was liking two sounds at the same time was that okay though was that a a normal All thing. Of us were okay. So like they'd support us when when they weren't playing out. And then when Bushman's not playing out, we'd support them and go to their dances. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. it was kind of like that them time the still. Mm. But not many sounds would do that still, but because we were cool with each other. Yeah. 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 So it's just those two sounds that you featured in over the more sounds more as you sounds, start. Man. More sounds. Um I was in another sound called Papa Zion, that was a big man sound. Now he used to keep his own dances. Mm. He, he used to have a record shop on um, Villa Road. Him named Paddyfoot is no longer here with us still. We have to big him up. Rest the in record peace. shop was called what? Zion Records. And he used to keep his own dances. When artists like Dennis Brown, yeah, um, Burning Spear, Bonnie Whaler. Lynn Val Thompson, be original artist, ranking dread. So when he's keeping them dances, it 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 put on dances in Birmingham, but not just Birmingham, it do the whole tour. And yeah. anywhere he's keeping his it, the dances, his sound will play on it as well. Okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He'll yeah. be keeping dances like in like I said, Huddersfield, Leeds, Manchester, Bradford. Sheffield, Liverpool, London, and the sound was on all of the dances. And most of the time when he was keeping dances, it was like in the middle of the week. Oh. Midweek. Yeah. Yeah. All and right. We got school to go to. I was, I was morning, just bro. about to say that, you know, like you're doing the dance and how did that work? Why? Well, <laughs> if my parents knew where I was, <laughs> Trust me, would have been a peer problem. Because we're we not getting until like four or five o'clock the next day. I'm mean, have to wake up seven o'clock for go to school. <laughs> so, when me go to school now, I'm tired. You see me? I drop asleep at school and everything. So, I used to say to the teachers, then you know, I don't feel too well, you know. <laughs> they'll send me in the medical room. I used to just go in the medical room and just sleep. Yeah. Come in there to check on you and then they'll say, yeah, you don't look like he's well. And then wake me up and send me home. <laughs> wake my parents, them, they never know what. <laughs> We're in a problem, but thank God he never reached there. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. So Papa Zion was a big sound star. He used to play with all, like, you know, Jashaka. He passed away last uh, year. Yeah, yes. He, he I used heard. to keep dances with him. Cox and Sound. Um, Quaker City, Jungle Man, Mafia Tone, Jamasigan, these sounds that you're not going to know. Nah. So that's where we're coming from, from that era. 
Okay. You get me? So I was in that sound also. Where the sound we used to in another sound called All Nation. I don't know. Guy called Bigger he used to own it. Mm. He, he, he changed the name to Live Wire. Oh, to, and I heard of Live Wire. Yeah. 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 He, he, he used to own that sound. It was called All Nation before Live Wire. He also owned a record shop which was on Dudley Road called Direct Link. I've heard of that record shop. Yeah. Yeah. I used to work in there as well. Okay. Back in the 90s. Mm. Yeah. Um, any any more song you going on? Huh? That's all I can remember right now, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when did you now, right, start moving to, like, really the DJ away from the sound system? Like? I can't forget Love Injection. Sorry, people, sorry. <laughs> love Injection, yeah. Was you in Love Injection? Yeah, man. Okay. I was back in, back in the 90s. DJ, like, selecting or yeah, toasting? Yeah. Selecting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how long was you in with Love Injection then? From about the uh, late 80s. So from about 88, 89 to 1995. Yeah. Yeah. You know, before we go on to the DJ now, mm-hmm. right, away from the sound system, what would you say memorable is one of the biggest dances that you remember that you've played at, that you've really sticks in your mind as as a dj yeah um one of the biggest occasions is being being um what would i say um being in love injection i got my first trip to go on a plane oh is it yeah we went to miami so that would have been one of the biggest events for me still playing sound system. But as a DJ, um playing playing for Snoop Doggy Dog. Oh, you play for Snoop Dogg? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He came over here back in the the nineties, did a did a concert, I think it was at um NEC or one of them places. But anyway, after that, we had the after party at Porsche Club. And he come to the Porsche Club after. Mm. and a party with we so that was like a, a, a nice occasion a nice never occasion forget, you yeah. know what I mean and him hug whip him come to the DJ booth and hug up the wall away <laughs> going at the middle of the dance floor and him a dance and <laughs> it was a nice vibe you see me a nice occasion yeah he just showed beer love to us man and you know what right because I was going to talk about this mm-hmm. because anytime I see or hear your name I always associate it with Porsche Club. I don't know if it's just me, but I associate it with Porsche Club. Many other things, but Porsche Club and your yearly birthday bash. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And to be fair, because I spoke, we did an interview a few years back, probably two years back with Mikey D, mm-hmm. right? And I was saying to him, he's one of the few people that you see that they have their annual birthday bash and it's still going yeah, still yeah. going and you're one of them mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Porsche Club what does Porsche Club mean to you we start we kind of set the trend there you know for a keep birthday party as a DJ and I used to tell all the DJs yo we, we, we go on the radio every week week in week out once a year if you keep your birthday party yeah and the people don't come out and support you you get me mm. yeah I've been doing that from from about 95 yeah, from I've left Love Injection, that's when I started keeping my birthday party. Yeah. So from about 1995. And I've kept it at Porsche Club probably about 10, 12 times as long as it was around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Used to get beer support from the, from the whole of Birmingham. Yeah. You know? So we used to tell the DJ, them, yo, once a year, keep your birthday a party. Yeah. Because we do this for free when I get pay for it. We're on the radio, week in, week out. You understand? I take a time out. I play music for the people. Eh? So keep a birthday party for yourself. Some people did. Some people didn't. Mm. You know? You know, for some viewers, though, that don't understand the radio, yeah. right? Just talk about why the importance of the radio. And as you've just mentioned, you do it week in, week out. You don't get paid for it. More time, you got to pay subs. Right, some some of the some, some of the yeah, but for viewers that don't really understand, 
why how important is the local radio station well it's kind of changed now but back in the day yeah. radio was the only way to promote an event unless you're gonna walk out walk into town because back in the day we used to go up on the ramp and hand out flyers and them thing there a uh, bull ring and and promote with things like that when you see people you know you give them your flyers but radio come now where you could have advertised and everybody used to listen to radio because we want to hear our kind of music we wasn't hearing that on the radio like on um what was the station brmb and them station there mm. they weren't playing reggae music well they, they was on a sunday but they weren't really running advertisements and things like that so to be on the radio and it used to keep us out of trouble as well you know what i mean yeah so it was we still look forward to it we still look forward to doing a radio show to today yeah yeah and okay so you know with the um nowadays you have like social media you have youtube and spotify and all of them platform there so radio <laughs> is not really as important as yeah. back then yeah you, you know what i mean but back in the 80s and 90s it was all about radio mm. you know again this is something you may not be aware of it but i'm just talking about my little surroundings when we used to listen to the radio and follow music right mm -hmm. we recall the time where you transitioned from local i'll call it community radio stations where you went to the mainstream yeah. radio station like more i'd say legal radio legal station, radio station. Chase FM. What was that move like for you and why did you do it? Well, <clears throat> when you're on a pirate station, you, you you got people called the DTI. Yeah. If them catch you, you're in a problems. You end up having to go to court. You have to pay a fine. You understand them, them take your record, your music. If you are drive, them can take away your car. You understand if they believe say you are the, the person that owns the radio station and you get a whole heap of money over tight, they can take all your money from you. So to go on a legal radio station, you don't have to worry about that no more. You're legal. Mm. So to go on a radio, a legal radio station is everybody's dream. You know what I mean? So when we get the call now, couldn't say no. Yeah. I just jump to it. Yeah. It was a joy, you get me? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So that was what year was that um 2000 and i think it was early 2000s and it yeah, or yeah. mid like mid um no actually it was about 96 you know was it yeah because we remember i remember that it was it was after i left love injection i left love oh. injection sound in um 95 mm. so it was about 1996 and i stayed there till about 2005 yeah 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 what was that it's a, did, did you enjoy that experience yeah, man. it was a it was a joy man yeah because um the artists them what come from jamaica yeah they'd come to that radio station mm. bounty killers the beanie mans you, you know what i mean yeah the international artists puff daddy usher a <laughs> so we get to see all of them artists there yeah you see me and yeah. for reason with them with mm. a conversation we get things like, you know, jingles. Yeah, oh yes. Yeah. Give you jingles and that. But when you're with a pirate radio station, you don't you don't get them yeah. perks. Yeah. So it was a it was a a good look. And plus, when they used to keep big dances with the artists, them like Puff Daddy and them artists they you'd be on the bill as well. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, get proper money. Mm. You know, good wages. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Couldn't say no. It's only a fool that said no. Yeah. You know? And I think, right, as well, that put a lot of hope in people. Yeah. Right. Everybody was saying, yeah, man, one day I want to get on one of them stations. I want to be on, because you got BBC One Extra now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got like um, the young ones, them are, I jump on it like um, DJ Silk them. Mm. So it's a good look. And do you know what, as well, a lot of people viewing this will see you. You paved the way for a lot of those things, you know. Because for me, that's the first time I know someone that I used to listen to on the community pirate radio stations on 
a mainstream station like that yeah, yeah. and it was a big big look back yeah. then anyway i don't know if you felt it yeah, but i know from somebody consuming it this is how it felt to us set a lot of trend man yeah when my trend was set you know mm. you know the music yeah from from records from using records and then moving from records and going to cds I was one of the first DJs to move to the CDs. You know, I'm not sure if you know the pioneer. The CD, yeah, the CDJs. Yeah, CDJs. I was the first one to come with that on a legal radio station as well. Yeah. Yeah, on Galaxy. And when I bought it to the station, they couldn't believe it. Because mm -mm. you know, like when you when you when you're mixing the songs and then you pull up yeah. and you will you, you spin back the song. Yeah. And the sound that it makes you <laughs> people was calling me from what's that you're using that's not a record what's that you're using I went to Germany I was playing in Germany one time man. and like when I finished doing my gig they took us to an a after party yeah so the German DJ is what was playing had them had them um, the, the CDJs <laughs> <laughs> and the man was playing a rhythm, a dancehall rhythm, because it was dancehall DJs, Germans, but they played dancehall. So anyway, the man's playing a rhythm, and he was like in a world of his own, in my juggle, and when he ready for pull up in my wheel, and yeah, I mean, woo! I mean, I say, I want it! <laughs> so I'm trying to go close to where the sound was, but it was in like a caged system where you got grills, you couldn't go behind there. Mm. So I went up as close as possible, I mean, look, I'm going to see where I might use. So I said to one of my brethren them from Germany, I said, what else am I using? And they tell me, Pioneer CDJ 800. <laughs> I said, yeah, man, I'm going to invest in a pair of them when I get back home. Yeah. So when I reach back home now, I do my research and buy a pair, save up my money and buy a pair. And then when I go to Galaxy and go to the radio station and set them up, <laughs> even the people in what? Own the station, called me and says what I was using. And when I told them, they went out and they bought two pairs. They bought four of them. Ah. Yeah. So before you brought it in, the station didn't know nothing about it either? They didn't know nothing about it. It was just the twin CD players that they was using. Yeah, because you had the ones with the little, yeah, yeah, and the yeah, little yeah, round thing ones. in the middle. And you, yeah. yeah. And we make, we make all the soul man them step up and stop use record. And invest in a pioneer, either the uh, the eight hundreds or the thousands. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, set that trend there. Oh, was it a the hard top two? The, the first man were coming in a Birmingham, in a England with Sorata. Okay. Yeah, the first man when we come in a dance hall with my laptop, <laughs> people were cursing me, saying, "Oh, he's mashing up the business. He might do this, he might do that." We now stop by record, but them don't know. Say so when you use laptop, you don't have to spend as much money to buy records, cause we were spending like hundreds of pounds on records a week time, depending mm. on how much records came. Yeah, you know. But when when the, the, the translate and it gone into the, the 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 CDs now, all you have to pay is your internet bill. Yeah, that's like thirty pound a month. How was you managing to keep up to like up to date? Because I'm assuming now as a DJ, you have to know the music that's coming in and break these music as well. But how was you keeping up to date with everything that was coming well, through? With records, you'd have like probably four or five different people going to London every week getting music. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have um, Dan Christie's, you know, Ezra. Yeah. He's a record shopper in, in Birmingham, in town. Summit Records. And you have um, a guy called Japal. He mm. used to go to London, just drive to London, get music, come back, call all the DJs. I got new music. You want them? Yes or no? Ah. Uh -huh. I said no, because we want the new, the latest. Of the latest. So is that how it was running back yeah, then? Yeah. Then you had another guy from London called Marcus. He used to come down every every week, like on a Thursday, with all the latest. You'd have people from Wolverhampton, a guy called Sugarloaf. He used to go to London too. So that's five different people coming with records. So <laughs> you can imagine the bill. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. Every week. 
So when we are left from records and I got a CD you now, you know, if you spend so much money. Yeah. Can you download them time they have um Soul Seek, Lime Wire, and um Napster and all them. Yeah. And it's not costing you so much money because you're downloading from other people, you're sharing music. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So you are sea of money. So the whole of money where you used to take and I buy a record, it's now in your pocket. In your pocket. You, you get me? But the boxes, then, I can and then, imagine. And then when you're on legal radio stations, all the producers want, want to link the DJs to send them their products. Oh. So now we're on legal radio stations. The producers are linking us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So the tunes are coming direct from the producers to us now. Because they need the DJs they to push it right. and break. Because again, I always think the DJs don't get the recognition that they should, you know, because they don't, they don't. you break records as well. You set trends. So if someone's got a record, it's determining how the DJ pushes it so you can build somebody's career, you and know. when the producer's sending you the record, you're the only one that's got it. Yeah. So you're the one that's playing it first. Mm. You get me? Yeah. Until it, it until it comes out on either CDs or on 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 vinyl. But mainly when we was on legal radio stations, it weren't really vinyls doing it again. It was CDs, CDs, and then it trans transformed to MP3s. Okay. Files. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. So, you know, with the, the, the producers then, would you say that they'll just send you a, a, a file and you just listen to them and the ones that you feel, yeah, this can work, boom. Or are they saying, look, push this one for me? Well, they'd give you dub plates as well. Oh, Same yeah. rhythms with the artist, but the artist, I can't hear in him. So <laughs> obviously you don't want to play that on the radio <laughs> station, you get me? Yeah. Because it's calling your name. So dub plate and you never paid for it. Mm. Because you're helping the producer, he's helping you. Mm. So one hand can't clap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Mm. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Yeah. So we used to get beer dub plates <laughs> for free. Some men have to buy that dub plate. If they, if they wanted the song, they'd have to buy it. But the DJs. But the DJs, because you're, on, cause you're on a international station, a legal radio station, you'd get a dub plate. Yeah. Even now we still get dub plates because um we got like internet radio. Okay. Goes across the world if you get what I mean. Because you set up right um that is it tell tell stream yeah tell Red. stream why what when did you set it up and why? Well, when I when I left Galaxy in two thousand and five, that's when I set up tell stream, mm. and it's still going on. Yeah, up to today, it's still on right now. And do you DJ on there as well? Yeah, yeah. You got your show on there as well? Yeah, yeah. I do a couple of shows on there. But I just pre-record it. Yeah. Yeah. What, why did you set up? Why did you set it up? Why, or why did you feel there was a need for it? Well, I got approached by a, a guy that owned a studio in Jamaica. Mm. His name was Mr. Tell. Oh. And he gave me all the software and all that. So in honor... To him giving me all the software and the knowledge, I called it Telstream. Okay. I named it after him. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? But he, we kind of disagreed on certain things because I was trying to get DJs from Birmingham to go on there. But he didn't, he didn't agree with it. He didn't like the DJs. Mm -mm. Yeah. So he was saying, ah, either you get rid of them DJs or I don't want nothing to do with it. And I couldn't do it by myself, you know what I mean? I needed help. So I said, well, I can't do it by myself. So he says, you know what? Just do what you're doing, man. I'm just going to do my thing. And he just broke away. And I just did my thing same way. Yeah. Calling who I was calling, bringing a few friends. Mm -hmm. People that I knew could do the job. Yeah. He didn't really like them. Oh. You understand? He didn't like how they were presenting the show then. Mm. But he, he liked my shows. He just wanted me to do it. And I'm saying, nah, man, I can't do it by myself. It's a lot. It's That's a lot. lot. Yeah. Being on the station every day. 
A 24 hour station. It's a lot Sometimes for one person. Shows for like seven, eight hours, man. Yeah. 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 I was saying, you know what? I have to call in some people for help me, and so I called in a few DJs from from Birmingham: mm. Mikey Biggs, Wayne Irie, John Kelly. I got a few DJs I know from Canada, um, America, uh, New York. A few DJs from Jamaica, and everybody loved it. Yeah, but this man he just he just didn't <laughs> like it for some reason. I, I don't know why. Uh, yeah. Okay, so and that it, was another trend that we set because I was the first one to do it. Because now you've got internet stations now as well. Yeah, now, internet yeah, stations. Mm. But when I came with Telstream, it was the first one. The first one. Yeah, yeah. And is it a predominantly you know? reggae bashment station or do you play other genres yeah, of music still. on there yeah yeah but it's mainly reggae and dance off. yeah because that we are pushed through the gate you know what i mean mm. yeah because r and b's all right they they got their thousands and thousands of listeners already you get me yeah so we was concentrating more on reggae and dance hall. yeah you know so hip-hop that done gone through the gate already you know what i mean mm. Play a bit of Afrobeats, Afrobeat, all right, Afrobeat up them crowd. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I do feature a bit of it. Yeah. But it's mainly reggae and dance. Art. Reggae and dance. Art. Yeah, yeah. Do you think, right, that kind of feed, I know we can never bring back that, what we was talking about earlier in terms of the sound system. But do you think that there's a space for it to kind of bring it back or even... Well... To be mm-hmm. honest, nowadays these youths say re- they ain't really interested in the sound system. Mm. The, 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 the love for the sound system is not there for the youths. They just want to walk with their, their laptop and them gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? Car, for example, if you did tell a youth, say, yo, you have to go in the van back. You know what I did? No generation you with them. <laughs> if you say, yo, go in the van back, you're going to say, you're yeah, disrespecting. Oh, you're dissing me, man. You're dissing me. I'm not going in November. But back in them times, it was an honor. It was a joy to go in the van back. Mm. If you went in the van back, that means you was accepted by the team. Because mm. not everybody could go in the van back, to be honest. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But nowadays, it's all changed, man. It's all changed. And what about... I don't know if we see the sound system come back, but... Most of the clubs you go into nowadays, they don't want sound systems in there either. They've got they their, don't. Nah, if you go in certain clubs, they've already got their PA systems in there. Mm. In in most of the clubs nowadays. Yeah. So if you bring your sound system in there, they don't want that. Mm. So then play a part in a, the demise of sound system as well. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? What What are some of the challenges that you find though as a DJ? Even if we go back to your birthday bash and every year you put put that on, what are the challenges in trying to get a club? Because I can imagine sometimes it's hard to get a club as well, you know, to put the music yeah, on. Some some of the clubs they don't want dance hall in there. Mm. From you tell them say dance hall music, the first thing them are gonna say, the people them are gonna come smoke ganja in a them club and you know club you can't smoke in a clubs nowadays. Mm. So that's the first thing they're going to say. Then they're going to say it's gang related and things like that. All the negative stuff. You, you, you know what I mean? Mm. They're going to say, they're gonna, you're going to bring gun man, come on my club, man. I'm going to come there with gun and people are going to sneak it in for them. And then there's going to be problems and they're going to lose their licenses and then no one and that. So they're going to stay away from it. Mm. But you do have some clubs that want dancer. Yeah. Because they see people buying bottles. Yeah. So it's a good thing. People spending money at their bar. Mm. You know what I mean? They're making a good amount of money. A good turnover <laughs> for, for, for one night. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So you, you have your goods and you have your bads. If you could talk to a, um, a club owner now, what would you say to them? Because when I see the clips, especially on your social medias, right? 
you always see people just enjoying themselves like it's yeah. a joyful thing it's a joyful thing we want to go out and have somewhere where we can go out with no trouble no bad energy people they can enjoy themselves and go on mm. you know what i mean me don't want to keep a dance with somebody if you come they come lose them life and don't reach home at the end of the night i'm not doing it for that yeah i'm doing it for people to come and enjoy themselves got a space that they can go out enjoy themselves socialize with one another meet people from all walks of life and have a nice time yeah <laughs> that's what it's about <laughs> that's all it's about isn't it? you know what i mean so i tell the people that own the clubs don't stereotype because that's what that's what they do basically mm. when they be a reggae and dancer first thing that comes to their mind is trouble but mm. when some of them do take the chance them sister boy oh sorry man i was stereotyping you know because i see you guys playing music and everyone's enjoying themselves there's no trouble nothing everyone's enjoying themselves and then they've, they've, they've left peacefully and i'm saying well that's that's what we do yeah we don't go out to make trouble I don't play music to, for people to go out and make trouble with their one another. I'm playing music to people to to socialize. You know how much picnic we met born in, in our music? Try <laughs> <laughs> uh, them go out and meet one another and start a relationship and then the the baby born and then family create. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. I know of people, enough you nowadays born say can we to we keep dance and birthday parties and their mother meet them father them father meet them mother and so on you get me <laughs> so that's yeah. what it's all about man socializing having yeah. fun mm. you know getting to know people and you know what because we could go on forever with forever, this right because forever. your musical journey is wide span but you know before we start wrapping up mm -hmm. right I do want to talk a little bit about the sound clash, the clashing culture as well. Mm -hmm. Have you been a part of that clash? Yeah, yeah clash. Was in Love Injection. What was that like? Like, you know, because it's not just, you know, for the viewers, you don't just turn up, you know, and clash. You have to prepare. You got to prepare and just talk Sometimes just a little bit through that. To Jamaica to get your dub plates. You have to link the artist personally to tell them what you want and how you want it and you want them to call another sound's name and some of them won't do it some of them will but the ones that will do it you have to pay them extra okay so things like that you have to do you mm. have to spend a lot it costs a lot of money you know what i mean mm. if i want being a man to call a sound's name he's not gonna just do it like that he wants money for that you have to pay extra for extra. them there uh bounty killer he wants extra and so on and the artist them nowadays for for a dub plate back in the day it wasn't that bad but nowadays for a dub plate for one it can cost you up to a thousand pound thousand pound yeah for one dub depending one. on which artist it is yeah yeah wow and that's a lot of for one song you know yeah yeah i mean that, that's a that's a lot for the one song for the one song and imagine if you're calling somebody's name you can't play that again just you normally can't play it again no the time you can play it again is if you're playing that sound again yeah you get what i mean so you're not going to throw it away you're going to keep it because mm. you never know you might end up playing that sound again. yeah yeah and when you play that sound again you, you can play that song and then you cut another one because he knows you got that one so he's going to cut one for you as well. Yeah. Calling your name. Mm. So then you're going to have to counteract him and cut another one calling his name. Yeah. So when you don't expect it, he just thinks you got one. But you got two, you might have three. But it all adds up. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. Wow. The sound clash thing costs a lot of money. And and and, this, and, and what, the, what the promoters pay the sounds is not what the artists charge. So it's mainly for the love, you know. It's for the, for the love. love. And this is what I don't think people realize. 
that you're going through all that and you're putting all these things Keeping and that's sound clashes cost thousands thousands of pounds for one sound system yeah it's like it's Mm. To spend on dub plates. Yeah. Yeah. Wally per money. You know what, Big John? And again, you money probably... Where you can, money where you can buy a house. You could buy a house. house. Money. Yeah. Serious thing, blood. <laughs> can buy a house. Yeah. Mortgage everything. And you understand? Mm. But it's just for the love. You know, as we're listening to this, to, to your journey, right... And it's a question, one of the questions, we always ask the guests, the guests to ask a um, question for the next guest. These questions are around role models, but I'm going to twist it up a little bit because as I listen to your journey, you can definitely see how, you know, we have role models in our community, mm -hmm. big role models, like you've reached the heights. The question that I'm going to ask you is, right, do you see yourself as a role model? Yeah, man, definitely. Definitely. Uh, a lot of people look up to me and they tell me that. Say, yeah, man, I wanted to be like you when I was younger, you know, man. I wanted to have a <laughs> radio show and such forth. And you inspire me to be a DJ. Yeah. You inspire me to do this. You inspire me to go and stop using CDs and yeah. buy a laptop. Yeah. I get it all the time, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, standard. Well, we here, right, wanted, definitely wanted to give you your flowers and uh, give you the opportunity to really talk about. And I know we've only touched the surface. We've only touched the bro, surface, bro. Years, man. Yeah. You know, if you could go back, mm -hmm. Big John, right, knowing everything you know now, the ups and the downs and the music industry, if you could go back and speak to that young Big John that was going upstairs and, you know, practicing and, you know, in, in with, with the rest of your friends, what are the few key gems that you would give to him? Um, what would I really say now? Because to be honest, I'm happy with where I am. I'm yeah. not going to lie. I've done a lot. Yeah. I've done a lot, man. All I would say is just keep doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? Keep pleasing people and making people happy. Because that's what we do it for. It's mm. not even for the money. When we was doing it, it was for the love. But then we seen money start. Money I make. So obviously from money's making, you're going to want to be involved. You want to get paid in it. Yeah. So I'd just say, just, just keep doing what you're doing. I've been all over the world. I've been a lot of places playing music. Yeah. And it's, it's been an honor to like travel the world mm. to play music, doing something that you love doing. You know what I mean, I say? Yeah. Instead of working in a factory doing a nine to five or stink a mickle and that. You know what I mean? <laughs> playing music and getting paid for it. That's one of the best jobs you can have. Yeah. And you know that message, Big John, how we're going to wrap this one up, is that's a common theme with this podcast, mm -hmm. is follow your passion. Yeah, man. And that message there, you are a living testament that if you just follow your passion and trust in your mind and what your mind's telling you to do, follow definitely, it, man. Definitely. Because it's, it's kept me out of trouble. I could have mm. been doing a lot of things differently. I know a lot of people that's, been in jail, lost their lives, and I could have went that way, but the music has saved me. Yeah. You get what I mean? Mm. I could have been, like, selling drugs and all that, all them negative things, but the music, trust me, the music has helped me, man. Yeah. It's saved my life. Yeah. So, that's what I'm going to tell the up-and-coming DJs. If you're playing music, stick to it. If you're serious about what you're doing, don't give up, man. You're going to get good times. You're going to get bad times. You're going to get busy times. You're going to get slow times. But just stay focused and do what you love. Yeah. You know? Big hey John, thank you for coming up today. Yeah, it's man, it's a pleasure. A pleasure. It's been a pleasure likewise. It's been our pleasure having you and listening to your journey. Mm -hmm.
it's very inspirational. We, yeah, as I said, we're giving you your flowers now, right, Watch to love. say you've put Birmingham on the map. Because I know when people come to Birmingham, they hear your name, they know your name all over, yeah, all over the world. And, and overseas too. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Thanks for coming up, Big Jan. Yeah, man, it's been a pleasure, man. And thanks for having me on your platform. Bless up, brother. Upfront discussions, <laughs> podcast. Keep up the good work, yeah? Respect, bro. Oh,